In the project simple pick, we wrote a single C source code file, compiled that, linked it with some microchip object code, and made an executable. But for many projects, you're going to find it convenient to break up your C code into multiple files. Only one of those files can have a main function in it. The other files are just helper files. Then each of those files is compiled individually to make an object code, and then they're linked together to make the executable. Now, if one of those C source code helper files that you wrote could be useful for other projects too, you might want to call it a library, maybe a library of mathematical functions that you often use, for example. And so then that C source code plus the header file that goes with it, we would call a library. The header file will have function prototypes for functions in the C source code that you want to make available to other C files. So that's exactly what we did with our program talkingpick.c. Uh, let's take a look at that. So here's talkingpick.c. The first thing that it does is, well, actually in this first line that's commented out right now, there's a def definition of a constant called nu32 standalone. Since it's commented out, we're not going to execute that line. The next one down says include nu32.h. That's the header file for our nu32 library that we'll talk about in a moment. And then down here in the, in the code, you can see things like nu32 startup, nu32 write uart or read uart. And those are available because we included this header file. Those function prototypes are now available. And the actual code for those exists in nu32.c, the C code that goes with this library. So if we take a look at the header file, this is it. At the top of the nu32.h header file is an include guard. So the first thing it does is it checks to see if this file has already been included in the current compilation to object code. Because if it has, you don't want to include it again. So it's checking to see if this constant nu32h has already been defined. And if not, then it's going to define it. And if it has already been defined, we're going to jump all the way to the bottom and basically not do anything inside of this, uh, this header file. OK, so it wasn't defined, so we define it. We come down here, we include plib.h, the microchip library, and we'll see why we need that in just a moment. The next thing we do is we check to see if a constant called nu32 standalone has already been defined. If it has been defined, we saw in our program talking pick.c that that line was commented out, uh, saying that we're not defining it. But if it had been defined, what would happen is we would execute these lines here. And these lines are simply uh, for the pick specifically for the pick32. What they're doing is they're telling the configuration bits Remember those last four words of boot flash? They're telling some of those configuration bits what their values should be. So for example, this FPLL mull right over here is saying something about how to turn the external clock input into a system clock that clocks the CPU. And there's some other things that we won't get into the details of. But this only execute if the program has been built to be a standalone that you're going to program with, a, say, a PIC kit 3 external programmer. If you're using a bootloader, you don't want this to execute. And the reason is that the configuration bits have already been set in the bootloader program. So you don't need to set them again. Okay? So we're checking to see if this has been defined. If it is, we build for the standalone version. If not, we skip it. So let's continue. Here's the end of that if statement to check whether that constant has been defined. Now, whether or not that constant has been defined, we come down to here. The next thing we do is we define four constants. One here is the frequency associated with our system clock, which is 80 million hertz. And then we also define two LEDs. We give the simple name NU32 LED1 and NU32 LED2 so that we can use those mnemonics in our programs. But those will turn into these two uh, SFR variable, uh, variable locations. And also, same for NU32 user, that's the user button uh, that will turn into a check of uh, port D input 13, so we can see if the, the user button is being pressed or not. 
After that, we have these other functions like NU32 startup and readuart1. And these are defined in the C code. And this is what allows us, the, the readuart and writeuart are what allow us to write back and forth to your laptop while the program on your PIC is running. So if we continue to the end here, this is where we end the if statement to see if we'd already included NU32.h in the current compilation or not. 